Blackview promised that one of the best dual dash cams in the industry just got better. What's new with the model DR970X and how does it perform in real life scenarios? We're here to find out. Let's inspect. Hello everybody, really nice to meet you, I'm Michael. On the channel we inspect a lot of cool and fresh tech and today we're going to talk about dash cameras this one in particular, DR970X by Blackview, something that the Korean brand has revealed during CES 2023. And I happen to be one of the first lucky guys to be able to test this in real life situations. And uh, disclaimer, I'm using a Blackview dash camera as a daily driver for more than four years now, so I'm very convinced in their good quality. I believe that they've kept it with the 970X. I'm gonna share with you everything meaningful about the dash camera, the strong, the weak sides, and in this video you're going to hear more about the upgrades, especially compared to the pretty sensing units. We're going to talk about the installations, see a lot of real-life footage, and also do some comparisons against other high-end models. Here's a fun fact. In Korea, where Blackview originates from, almost every vehicle is equipped with a front and a rear dash cam. This is a steadily growing business, very competitive in the past few years, and Blackview is among the top players when it comes to high-end car DVRs. FineView, Thinkware, Nextbase, even Viofo, these are the brands considered to be similarly good and achieving excellent results when it comes to recording video quality. Straight to the unboxing, there are a few different 970X editions present. The top end has a SIM card module integrated, which will enable you to use it as Wi-Fi hotspot in the car, and also for 24-7 access to the unit regardless of its position, as long as there is mobile network coverage, of course. What I'm currently unboxing is the edition without such a module, and it obviously has slightly lower price. The unit looks exactly like the predecessing models. Furthermore, I can confirm that the quick-release bracket is compatible across the three last generations. I'm quite a fan of keeping the same shape and structure, because the size and overall design of the 900 models was good enough anyway. Surprisingly, Blackview still rely on a micro-USB port. This one is for direct connection to a PC. You can see the cable port for the rear unit and a function button to format the microSD card here, on the side. With the 900X, it was able to control the Wi-Fi hotspot as well. There's a capacitive area on the other side. The rest is plastic made. Good feeling and quality. I was having high hopes about the rear module, but it looks to be the same as with the 4-year-old DR900S. There are some more accessories included, a hardwire kit, a cigarette lighter socket adapter, a few cable holders and, of course, a detailed user guide. For the record, if you go for the LTE-enabled edition, this is where the U-SIM should be placed. It is part of the main body. Focus on DR970X is on sleek design, good materials and keeping the form factor of the previous generation which most people seem to appreciate. There are a few LEDs on the body, giving you status information about the main subsystems. In terms of technology on the inside, improvements over the 900X model are rather insignificant. Still, a high-end 8-megapixel image sensor in the front unit. There's optics with 162-degree diagonal field of view. The system on a chip is quite powerful, supporting up to 4K 30 frames per second maximum resolution. The rear unit has Sony Starvis image sensor and operates at full HD. There's an inbuilt dual-band GPS, Bluetooth speaker, microphone, proximity sensor, this inbuilt supercapacitor, micro SD card slot supporting up to 256GB in terms of size, and there is good software for smartphone and PC both. The specification pack if we don't think about the price too much, it's really on par with most of the high-quality standards of Blackview, with exception for the rear unit, and I'll speak of that in a moment. We have really decent optics and really decent image sensor, and I believe that Blackview are mostly proud about the NPU development, which does a remarkable job, especially in low-light environments. Uh, it's uh, one of the best shaped dash cameras, at least in my opinion, very discreet. They reuse the form factor from the predecessing generation, and if you already have it installed, you can just swap the units and carry on utilizing it. That's one of the smallest LTE-enabled variations, because you don't have to use any external LTE connections. However, 
the price for the non-LT970X is, in my opinion, a bit too high. Therefore, you might feel more comfortable to pay significantly less for the 900X or even the older 900S series, which are going to deliver almost the same kind of quality. Now, time to get you through the installation and analyze some more footage. For the installation, you're gonna need all the parts included in the assembly and some basic mechanical and electrical skills. Find a suitable spot on the windshield and place a sticker, then gently find a way for these cables to reach the cigarette socket. If you want to use the hardwire kit and take advantage of 24-7 parking surveillance, you will need to have experience with car fuse boxes and probably get to know how to use a multimeter. If the terms we've just mentioned scare you a bit, go to the nearest car repair shop or find a good electrician who can do it for you. The rear module installation is much simpler than that because all that it takes is connecting the coaxial cable. To thoroughly analyze some footage, in daytime there hardly will be good dash cams failing to deliver decent quality. If there is sunshine and generally enough of light, the R970X is superb. Some slight white balance issues which are notable though, it's something that would probably annoy only the people that deal professionally with video footage. Honestly, if priority is to capture recordings during the day, there are a lot of budget-friendlier alternatives that will deliver very similar quality. Here, with this black view, we can discover the true strengths only by thoroughly analyzing, zooming in and so on. 25 megabits per second in highly compressed format in MP4 container, this is how the dashcam stores its files. If you want to take a look at somewhat more challenging environment, low light performance is a key selling point of high-end dashcams, I've talked many times about the fact that it's easier to extract better low light footage out of a 1080p image sensor as opposed to a 4K one because of the high pixel density with the latter options and the overall smooth size of the image sensor surface. Since Blackview didn't disclose the exact image sensor here, I'm gonna have to bet that it might be the same as the one in the predecessing generation. Regardless, true or not, low-light image quality is excellent and you're going to be able to see a lot more as compared to what other dashcams are going to deliver. Gonna show you here side-by-side -side footage with another Korean dashcam brand that I'm lately testing, FineView GX1000, and I guess you can now well understand what we're talking about. Interesting to see which of both cameras do you vote for when it comes to image quality and details. This is yet another test and this time we're trying out the integrated microphone inside the DR970X by Blackview. Is it a good microphone? You can let me know of your opinion in the comment section below the video. The rear camera unit is rather disappointing, not because it's bad or underperforming, actually it kind of is. Recently, Viofo have launched a dashcam running the same image sensor setup on both the front and the rear unit, and with DR970X, Blackview keep the same close to 5-year-old rear module running 1080p and not delivering that good level of details. As for configuration and modes, Blackview are again in their own league. Languages, Wi-Fi modes, picture fine-tuning, even voltage cutoff rules brilliant. It is the way to use simplified connection which starts via Bluetooth and then automatically adds the Wi-Fi for optimal file transfer. With Android 13, there are some annoying moments with the way LTE and wireless are fighting, so be patient. This also is your gateway to connecting the dashcam in real time, works exactly as a DVR, just signed for any of the cloud subscriptions. Blackview also provide a PC viewer, something that I totally enjoy and prefer over the smartphone app. Before we give it a final verdict, here's my list with the most disturbing drawbacks, with the price being too steep for a dashcam as a starter, the not that significant hardware upgrade, the lack of customization for the capacitive area and the lack of improvement of the rear module. Bottom line, yes, that's a superb dash camera. However, if you already have 900S or 900X inside your car, this would only make sense if you want to jump to the LTE edition, because without LTE, 
it costs kind of too much and you wouldn't notice any significant difference in terms of image quality. If the budget for the 970X is too high for you, then probably you can see some of the uh, processing generations. Uh, Blackview also have the 700 line, which is also quite attractive at a much more affordable price. Or maybe you can check some of the other reviews that I've posted on the channel about dash cameras, which could cost just a fraction of the price you are going to pay here. So, in case this video has helped you, give us a like. In case you have some other outstanding questions, then be invited. Comments are down below and I'll step in as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching this episode. It's been a pleasure. My name is Michael and would love to see you again in our next video. So, subscribe. See ya!